Hey guys, welcome back to CodeDrill. In this video, we're going to talk about Apollo GraphQL. Now, I've made a video about Apollo a few months ago, but there's been quite a few updates and I wanted to make a remake of this video to keep things up to date. Now, the first question would be, what is Apollo GraphQL? Now, as it turns out, it's actually an open source platform that includes a bunch of different products. One of them is Apollo Client, and this is basically a library that allows you to connect your front end with the GraphQL backend. And it also comes with a bunch of implementations for libraries like React, Vue, and Angular. Next up, we have Apollo Engine, which is a library that provides you with a bunch of tools for performance and error tracking. And last up, we also have Apollo Server, and this is the one we're going to be focusing on in this video. And this library basically allows you to create GraphQL backends with the Node.js server. So if we click on Learn More, we're going to be redirected to the homepage of Apollo Server. And now the premise of Apollo Server is actually pretty simple. Just like with Express GraphQL, you define your schema with a bunch of type definitions. You create a map of resolver functions to resolve all of the fields on the schema. And last step, you new up the instance of Apollo Server. You pass in type definitions and resolvers. And finally, you can tell the server to listen to any incoming connections. Now, if we look at some of the highlights of Apollo Server, it has a schema first approach, which is basically to say that the development of the server is data driven. We also have automatic persisted queries, and this basically allows you to pass in IDs or hashes instead of the entire queries. We also have simplified mocking. So instead of providing a map of resolvers, you can actually set the mocks to true. And this will basically map all of your schema with some dummy data. We also have simplified real time data updates. So even though GraphQL already has subscription support. Apollo Server actually makes it a lot simpler to integrate and implement. We also have tools to measure performance and also report any errors happening in the application. Now, this actually comes from Apollo Engine, but Apollo Server itself provides an easy integration with that service. In last step, we also have advanced caching. And this one refers to the technique of batching and caching your queries to avoid fetching the same data multiple times. Now to see this in action, we're going to go back to our project over here. So if you don't have this repository, you can basically go to github.com slash alex996 slash GraphQL chat. I'm going to also include the link in the description below. But so far, we have the same application from video number two. And if you're interested to see the code for video one, you can also switch the branch to GraphQL JS, right? So what you can do is you can go ahead and clone the repo yourself and you're going to get the starter project for this video. Now, I already have the code in my editor, so I'm going to switch back there. And the first thing we need to do is let's go to package JSON. So far, we have three different dependencies. We have Express. We have Express GraphQL, which is a middleware from Facebook to instantiate a GraphQL server on top of the existing Express application. And last step, we also have GraphQL, which is a library for parsing and validating and executing GraphQL queries. Now, we do need to keep the GraphQL dependency, but we don't actually need any of the two other dependencies. So we can actually uninstall them first. So let's do yarn remove those two dependencies. I'm going to remove express and I'm also going to remove express GraphQL. So once they're gone, we can actually go ahead and add Apollo server. This is going to install the Apollo server dependency for us. Now, Apollo server actually requires you to install GraphQL, but because we already have it, we can just skip that step and just include Apollo server alone. It's also safe to remove Express from the list of dependencies because Apollo server comes in with an integrated Express server. So we don't actually have to install it ourselves. Now, if we go back to index.js, we already have a bunch of code in here. So we're going to start refactoring it. So first of all, we're going to pull in Apollo server. So let's do exactly that. Let's do const. We're going to have a named import. Now we're going to have a require statement of Apollo server. So now let's go back up here and we can have an Apollo server import. We also need to import GQL template literal helper. And this one is going to be used for our schema, but let's do it step by step. So first of all, we can remove express. We can also get rid of GraphQL HTTP. We can remove build schema. We can also keep crypto for now because it's going to be used to generate IDs for our users over here. Now, moving on, let's actually update the schema. I'm going to change it to type definitions. And this is really just a convention to follow, but you could basically call it anything. You're going to see in a second why it's useful to call it type definitions. Now, we also need to change build schema to GQL. Now, this will be not a function call, but it's actually going to be a template literal call. So we're going to call it on GQL. 
So we need to remove those parentheses. You could also see that we get syntax highlighting out of the box. And that's actually because of a special extension that you can install. It's called GraphQL for VS Code. So this one basically allows you to see your GraphQL schema with useful highlights. Right, so once we have our type definitions, we can move on to our root value, which I'm going to change to resolvers. Now this one is going to be a map, so you can provide an object, just a simple object literal, but you also need to provide a bunch of keys. Now the first one of them is actually query, and query is where you define all your top level resolvers. So anything that goes inside of the root query also needs to be present on the query resolver map that you put inside of the resolvers object. So we can go ahead and move messages, user, and users inside of query. We're going to need to update the code as well. So first off, I'm going to get rid of this map function. So we don't need to wrap the users with the user class. So we can just safely remove that call. Now for the user itself, we can go ahead and fetch the user. So I'm going to remove the brackets over here. We don't need them. Remove that rest of the code as well. So what we need to do is we basically need to call the find method on the users collection or array. And then we're going to find the user by the ID pass to the arguments. Now we have to be careful with the arguments over here because the signature for resolver functions is actually different in Apollo server as it is in Express GraphQL. So as it turns out in Express GraphQL, we get a method that has the following signature. So we first of all get a list of arguments as the first parameter. We also get the context value and we also get the info object and now this i actually documented in the repo if you scroll down to the readme you're going to find a signature for each resolver function and you can also put it on the class as well it's going to have the same exact signature as an individual resolver function so we get our arguments we get the context and we also get the info object now the context is something you can provide optionally and the info is basically an object that contains the information about the incoming query now, with Apollo server, like I said, the signature of this function becomes a little bit different. First of all, we get the root object. Now, this root object, by default, is going to be the value of the root value that you can pass into your server optionally. In this case, we're not going to have any root value, but we do have a list of arguments. So the arguments, in fact, become the second argument to this resolver function over here. So we can actually go ahead and destructure it ourselves. We can grab the ID out of it like this. The messages, we can keep them as they are. But for the add user mutation, we actually need to add in another key over here. So we can call it mutation. We'll pass in the add user function inside like this. Let me kill off that space. And now lastly, the add user function is going to change as well. So the first argument, once again, is not going to be the list of arguments, but it will actually be the root object, which in this case will be undefined, but we still have to provide it. So make sure to put in the arguments as the second parameter to the function. Now we can kill the instantiation of express. We don't have any express framework so far. We can actually also remove all of the code at the end. Now what do we do with these messages over here? Because the messages have to be resolved on the user object. What if we make a query that asks for messages on the user? So we're going to need to find a way to deal with those messages. Now in express GraphQL, you really don't have that much choice because your root value object only allows you to create top level resolvers. With Apollo server, everything actually changes because now you can go ahead and create nested types. So you can actually go ahead and create a definition for a user. So anything that you want to resolve on the user that's not available on the actual data source, so something like let's say messages, right? That's actually not available on the data source. We can go ahead and create a definition for those messages inside of that user resolver function. So we can go ahead and paste the messages in here. I'm going to go ahead and create this as a function. Once again, we can remove the curly braces. We can just return the messages. But in this case, we do need to provide one argument and it's actually going to be the root value. Now, remember I told you that the root value inside of query or inside of mutation is typically going to be undefined unless you provide a value for root value to your server. In this case, the root object will actually be the user. Now that's because the user is being resolved on the user's collection. So for example, if you make a query to users and you also include a subselection of messages on those users, those messages will be resolved on the user object. And that's why this user key over here 
anything that's listed under that key will also be resolved with the user object itself. So we can basically just rename root to user just for clarity. And this one will refer to a single individual user object when this function is being called. So we can go ahead and reference the user ID like this. We do need to actually check those messages against the user ID to filter them down accordingly. But once that's done, we should be good to go. We should be all set. Now we have our type definitions as well as the resolvers and everything should hopefully be resolved correctly. So we can go ahead and create our server in the end. So let's do a constant of server. We're gonna call Apollo server like this. We're gonna new it up. We're gonna pass in our type definitions as well as resolvers. So once that's done, we can actually go ahead and do a server listen command. This is gonna spin up a GraphQL server on a slash GraphQL endpoint, and it's also gonna serve up on port 4000 by default. But once this listen function resolves, we're gonna have an object. So let's do it then. We're gonna have a destructuring statement. Let's have a URL off of that object. And let's finally do a console log of that URL like this. And let's stop because we're resolving messages on the user object inside of resolvers map. We can actually go ahead and delete the user class. It's not gonna be used anymore. So let's delete it. And then finally, we can go back to our package JSON. Let's go ahead and create a script. So we can call it, let's say watch. We can just call node mod like this without any arguments. And it's gonna to default to index.js file that we have in here. Okay, so going back to our terminal, we can go ahead and do yarn watch. This will spin up the server. So we can go ahead and click on the link. This will open up the GraphQL playground IDE. So what we can do is we can actually fire off queries from over here, just like what we do with graphical interface. So if I go ahead and run that query, this will get us all the users with all of the messages, but we could also go ahead and select an individual user. So let's say a user with ID of one, we can go ahead and fetch the ID, the name, perhaps also the messages of that user. Let's say the body and create it at. So there we go, we got an object of user with the ID of one, and we also get all of the messages for that user. So all of the queries should be working fine, but this is really just the beginning. Apollo server comes with a lot of different features that we can start using. So for example, if we wanted to go ahead and experiment with mocking, we can actually go ahead and remove resolvers from our Apollo server instantiation statement. We can actually just put in mocks and set it to true, and now we're not passing any resolvers, so we're not gonna be resolving any data. We're not gonna be actually reaching out to our static collection over here. And we're actually gonna be serving up mocks. So if I go back to the browser, let's say if I go ahead and switch back to our previous query on all of the users. So if I go ahead and fire off that, you're gonna see that we get a bunch of different objects. Actually, we got two, but you can see that they have randomly generated IDs and also randomly generated fields like email and name. And the same goes also for messages. So all those different scalar types like ID or a string on the body or created a field, those are gonna be auto-generated for us because we've set up the mocks property to true. Now this is useful for prototyping, especially if you're developing the front end and you really don't have a functional backend yet or that backend is being actively developed. You can just go ahead and set the mocks property to true and this will basically mock up the backend for you. But I'll bring it back to resolvers. And so far we're basically done. This is a functional server. What we've basically done is we've converted it from Express GraphQL to Apollo server. So we can actually close off right now. But one of the things I'll mention before signing off is if you go back to the documentation over here, if you go ahead and click on get started, first of all, you can find the documentation for the resolvers. If you go ahead and click on fetch data with resolvers, this will bring you up to this section over here. You can read up more about the actual signature of each resolver function. Like I said, you really have to be careful about this one because the first argument will be the root value or the parent value as opposed to the arguments object as it is in Express GraphQL. And now aside from that, what we've done in this video is we've created a standalone server. And this is really just sugar for creating an Express server and attaching the Apollo server on top of it. But you can actually go ahead and do it yourself. So if you switch to building a server section, you scroll down, you're gonna find 
is subsection for creating an express server yourself. Now let me go ahead and find it. This would be the middleware section over here. If you pull in Apollo Server Express library, this one allows you to apply the GraphQL middleware yourself. So you can go ahead and create your server like we did in this video. But if you already have an existing Express app, you can go ahead and just simply apply the middleware by passing the application instance that you already have in your app. And then of course you could also have a bunch of different other routes that you want to in initialize. So you can basically have a GraphQL service alongside the existing Express application. Right, so this is basically it for this video. And as you've probably guessed, I'm coming back to the GraphQL series. So starting with this week, I'm gonna be working on that series again. So with the exception of a few videos, perhaps in the Material UI series, I'm gonna be focusing on this playlist exclusively. So I'm back in the game and we're going to be continuing with the series next week. So I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and I'm going to see you next time. Take care.